In this video, I'll be covering the medicinal properties of a mushroom called lion's mane. Lion's mane is a well-known edible and medicinal mushroom found throughout the world, and it colonizes both living and dead broadleaf trees. Its fruiting bodies, meaning the mushroom heads, and fungal mycelia, meaning the root-like structures, exhibit various pharmacological activities, including the enhancement of the immune system, as well as anti-tumor, hypoglycemic, and anti-aging properties. Lion's mane is also known as Hiroshima arenaceus in Latin, Yamabushitake in Japanese, and the monkey's head in China. The mushroom looks like a clump of a lion's mane, or someone's beard hair, except that the individual threads or spines are thicker than a strand of hair. Also, the mushroom is a poorly white color. The whole mushroom, including mycelium and fruiting bodies, has many bioactive compounds that has a therapeutic action on the body. Lion's mane is found to benefit Alzheimer's disease and dementia, the regulation of the immune system, diabetes, wound healing, and many different types of cancers. Scientific studies have shown that the aromatic compounds Hericinonis and Arenacinus isolated from the fruiting body and mycelium of the lion's mane mushroom promote NGF or nerve growth factor synthesis or production in uh, cultured astrocytes. In other words, um, an astrocyte is a star-shaped glial cell that belongs to the central nerve, nervous system or the brain. These results highlight the usefulness of uh, Hericium arenaceus, or the lion's mane mushroom, for the treatment and the prevention of dementia. Now, some of the uh, properties or effects of lion's mane includes it to be a anti-anxiety, anti-cancer, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant agent. It also is found to have a neuroprotective effect on the brain, and it uh, it also clears brain fog. It increases overall energy, it reduces memory impairment and improves long-term memory, it increases motivation, improves wound healing, and lowers blood glucose. The last two are uh, pretty important for diabetic patients. So in order to understand why uh, lion's mane has so many different properties, we need to understand how lion's mane works first. Let's first investigate lion's mane's ability to increase uh, NGF in the body. So how does NGF affect diabetes? Lion's mane has a chemical called hericinonis, which promotes uh, nerve growth factor in the body. As the name suggests, no, nerve growth factor is responsible for the growth and the survival of nerve cells or neurons. Nerve growth factor or NGF affects the neurons in the brain, but NGF is also related to many different biological processes, not just brain function. For example, NGF is also involved in the regulation of the immune system and the survival of pancreatic beta cells. An NIH study indicates that pancreatic beta cells naturally, naturally secrete NGF and require NGF for survival. When pancreatic beta cells no longer receive NGF, they undergo cell death and are less likely to survive. A decrease in the number of insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas is what leads to diabetes. So perhaps a decrease in NGF needed by beta cells in order to survive may also contribute to diabetes. So the question is, what prevents beta cells from receiving adequate NGF? Well, I speculate that chronic stress, depression, and obesity are lower levels of NGF in the body. And it so happens that chronic stress, depression, and obesity also increases the risk for diabetes. But as I dug deeper, I found that both acute and chronic stress increases the level of NGF in the body as an adaptive mechanism to stress. So why would stress be a risk factor for diabetes? Depression also contributes to chronic stress, so the same question can be asked here. And obesity, except for extreme cases, also increases the amount of NGF in the body. But again, obesity is a risk factor for diabetes. So we return to the question what causes diabetes. After further research, I found that the reason why chronic stress, depression, and obesity are risk factors for diabetes is because they all contribute to a low level of chronic inflammation in the body. Chronic inflammation is a slow killer that causes the cells in the body to be damaged by oxidative stress, especially the more delicate structures like the DNA. And do you know what happens when the cell's DNA is damaged? When a cell's DNA is damaged, most of the time the cell undergoes apoptosis or cell death in order to prevent harmful mutations from spreading. So the cells that regenerate in the body at a slower pace cannot keep up to replace the cells that have died from before. That includes the pancreas, so you end up with not enough beta cells to make insulin. That is one way for diabetes to appear when you don't have enough beta cells. And you know, wound healing in diabetic patients is very slow. That is no coincidence. Delayed wound healing indicates that the body is having a harder time regenerating itself. The cells aren't dividing fast enough to quickly heal the wound. 
We already know that chronic inflammation can prematurely kill off cells. What else can contribute to delayed wound healing in diabetes? Well, according to an NIH study, many things. Factors such as age, obesity, malnutrition, macrovascular and microvascular diseases may contribute to wound infection and delayed wound healing, especially in type 2 diabetic patients. In addition, hyperglycemia caused by decreased insulin availability and increased resistance to insulin can affect the cellular response to tissue injury. So what causes delayed wound healing may also contribute to better cells not being able to regenerate fast enough to replace the dead ones and prevent diabetes. So what can prevent diabetes? Does lion's mane have a place in treating diabetes? We already know that lion's mane can increase the levels of NGF in the body, but mild obesity and stress can cause NGF to increase. I suppose you can say that since an increase in NGF is the body's adaptive mechanism towards a stressor, lion's mane in theory helps the body adapt. So what else can lion's mane do? Lion's mane can also reduce inflammation. We already established that stress and obesity may cause chronic inflammation and that chronic inflammation may contribute to diabetes. So by treating chronic inflammation, we are in theory taking away a risk factor for diabetes. Finally, lion's mane is shown to lower blood glucose in diabetic rats. Quoting the study that showed that lion's mane lowers blood glucose levels in diabetic rats, the methanol extract of Herisium arenaceus was concentrated to remove the solvent, yielding a residue that was referred to as hem, which is then added to the diet. The hypoglycemic effects of feeding hem to streptozotocin-induced diabetic rats were studied. Polydipsia was stronger in induced diabetic rats not fed hem than those that received hem. Rats fed with hem had significantly lower elevation rates of blood glucose levels than those not fed with hem. In this particular study, rats were given streptozotocin to induce diabetes. Streptozotocin is a chemical that is toxic to the insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas. The study prepared three different groups of rats, those that were given diabetes and the lion's mane treatment, those that were given diabetes without the lion's mane treatment, and lastly, a control group of rats without either. What the study found was that lion's mane reduced polydipsia in diabetic rats, as well as lowering blood glucose levels. Know that polydipsia is a, another word for abnormally great thirst, which is also a symptom of diabetes. So this is relevant because the treatment of diabetes involves the use of medication to control blood glucose levels from becoming too high. The typical medication used to treat diabetes often come with under undesirable side effects. So with enough supporting research, lion's mane can be offered to doctors as an alternative for treating diabetes. So another question is how can lion's mane benefit the brain? Well, scientists conduct tests with the lion's mane mushroom to figure out how it can exert a therapeutic effect on neurons. So, quoting from one of the studies, it was found that an exobiopolymer purified from the liquid culture broth of lion's mane mycelium enhanced the growth of rat nerve adrenal cells. The polymer also improved the extension of the neurites of the PC12 cells. Its efficacy was found to be higher than those known nerve growth factors such as nerve growth factor itself, and a brain-derived nerve growth factor, so NGF and BDNF. While the polymer improved both cell growth and neurite extension, NGF and BDNF did only outgrowth of the neurites. It was also confirmed that the polymer reacted with nerve cells within 30 minutes after adding the sample compared to 80 minutes and adding the other two growth factors. The number of the neurite-bearing cells remained re relatively steady in adding the polymer even when the cell growth started to decrease. It was interesting that the polymer effectively delayed apoptosis of PC12 cells by dramatically reducing the ratio of apoptotic cells to 20% from 50% of the control. Exobiopolymer is referring to the organic material on the outside. Mycelium is referring to the vegetative part of the fungus colony, which looks like a bunch of roots. Normally, mycelium is hidden underground only to show the fruiting bodies of the mushroom head for certain occasions. So, in the study mentioned above, Scientists made a purified liquid extract of the root-like structure of lion's mane and gave it to the rat nerve cells. This extraction applied to a rat's nerve cells showed enhanced growth. If lion's mane can enhance the growth of nerve cells of one part of the body, won't it be able to enhance the growth of nerve cells in other parts, like the brain? Furthermore, the extraction enhanced the extension of neurites of a PC12 cell. 
PC12 cells are a rat's neuron used for understanding brain diseases. And neurites refer to any projection from the cell of a neuron, either an axon or a dendrite. Note that both axons and dendrites are used by neurons to form connections or synapses for communicating with other neurons. An extraction of lion's mane shows to enhance the extension of a nerve cell. That means lion's mane helps nerve cells develop faster. This effect can have therapeutic benefits if a patient's brain nerve cells are developing properly, like Lewy bodies in Parkinson's disease. Additionally, lion's mane extract was found to be more potent than nerve growth factor and brain-derived nerve factor in stimulating nerve cells. NGF and BDNF only affect the outgrowth of neurites or the development of a neuron's dendrites and axons. Lion's mane does the same in addition to spurring the growth of new nerve cells and increasing the synthesis of NGF. Moreover, lion's mane extract is faster acting, taking only 30 minutes to affect a rat's nerve cell compared to 80 minutes that NGF and BDNF took. Lion's mane also had the effect of reducing programmed cell death. The control had 30% more cells die compared to the nerve cells treated with lion's mane. Lion's mane enhances learning and memory. To summarize, lion's mane improves the growth rate of new nerve cells, the development of axon and dendrite connections or synapses between neurons, and the survival of neurons. This is relevant to the human brain, because the brain is basically a mesh of about 100 billion neurons with trillions of interconnections. Each connection transmits a signal, and somehow that produces what we call thoughts. So in theory, because lion's mane improves the overall health of neurons, Lion's mane may therefore improve the overall health of, a, of the brain, given that the brain is heavily composed of nerve cells. That also means that the function of the brain also improves, like learning, memory formation, thought processes, and long-term memory. But the question remains, how exactly? Well, we know that uh, we are able to acquire and retain new information by studying. But what are the changes that exactly occur in the brain that allow us to learn new things? Our brain doesn't just keep accumulating more brain cells. Our brain doesn't just keep getting bigger over time, after all. At the biological level, the memories are thought to be represented by vast interconnected networks of neural synapses in the brain. With synaptic plasticity, or the strength of a synapse, playing a major part in our ability to learn and recall information from memory. Specifically, our memories are thought to be stored in the hippocampus, and learning new memories is associated with increased hippocampal neurogenesis. Acts of learning also improve survival, long-term potentiation, or LTP, and the myelination of neurons in the hippocampus. Note that LTP is when synapses or connections between neurons become stronger. The enhanced survival of neurons is related to new memory formation during the learning experience, and both LTP and neural myelination allows us to better recall that information. That's because LTP allows a neuron to fire more easily, and myelin both speeds up and preserves a signal sent through a neuron. LTP and increased neural myelination of the hippocampus translate to having an easier time recalling previous experiences and formulating thoughts. Lion's mane shows similar benefits to neurons, supporting the notion that this mushroom may improve the brain function and a person's ability to learn. In fact, scientific studies have shown that lion's mane improves the myelination of neurons. Myelin is a membrane that wraps around the axon of a nerve cell such that it is also called the myelin sheath. The myelin functions to insulate the axon and accelerate the speed of a nerve signal or action potential through the axon. The importance of the myelin sheath can be understood when looking at the neurodegenerative diseases caused by the dysfunction of the myelin sheath. For example, Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis are both caused by the myelin falling apart. Multiple sclerosis is caused by the immune system attacking the brain itself, destroying the myelin as a result. And Alzheimer's disease occurs by the breakdown of myelin that promotes the buildup of toxic amyloid beta fibrils that eventually deposit in the brain and become plaques which uh, have long been associated with Alzheimer's disease. Then these amyloid uh, products in turn destroy more and more myelin, disrupting brain signals and leading to cell death and the classic clinical symptoms of Alzheimer's. In both Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis, you can see that both cognitive function and brain control over the body becomes massively weakened. These diseases show how important myelin is for our brain to function properly. 
and that being able to preserve and remyelinate our neurons is important for maintaining a healthy cognitive function. Given that lion's mane is shown to speed up a neuron's myelination, it holds value as a substance for preserving our cognition. So far, there are quite a few studies that show evidence that lion's mane is beneficial for neurons in vitro, in other words, in the peachy dish. But what about in real life? What cognitive benefits do people see from actually eating the mushroom? Well, according to one study, lion's mane improves the cognition of Japanese dementia patients, but there still needs to be more research done, more clinical trials testing the effectiveness of lion's mane mushroom for treating neurodegenerative diseases. In conclusion, lion's mane is a mushroom with many health benefits and cognitive benefits. I would like to see more research done on this mushroom in terms of how it can treat and cure diseases like diabetes and dementia. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or experiences that you'd like to share about the lion's mane mushroom, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd appreciate it if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Finally, if you'd like to receive more biohacking content like this one, please feel free to subscribe to my newsletter in the description of this video. Bye!